Howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome to the Wobble and Joy Sports channel. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider liking the content and subscribing to the channel. But if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Who am I? I'm just a rugby league fan and I just want to get a couple of opinions off my chest and I'm going to raise a little bit of sand right now. So the first thing I want to get off my chest is magic around Perth and Adelaide. They're coming for Brisbane's magic round. They're coming to... Uh, poach it and bid for it millions of millions upon dollars and peter volandis and andrew andrew abdo their eyes are turning into dollar signs at the moment and they're absolutely drooling from the mouth um but legitimately why can't why can't the nrl why can't everybody agree upon having two magic rounds every single season from now on one remains in brisbane as like the the heritage magic round every single year uh and then you take the other magic round on the road every year one year adelaide the next year tasmania who cares man do two magic rounds and it solves so many freaking issues i can't believe that we haven't seen more double headers and more or at least one magic round already at sydney olympic park why has that not happened yet Legit, why hasn't that happened yet? You know, you have one magic round where some teams give up home games up in Brisbane. Well, turns about fair play. That second magic round means that a Brisbane Broncos home game that may sometimes be allocated for magic round one, they take that other home game on the road to, to friggin' Darwin if magic round ever goes up that far, you know? So... That's, I just wanted to put that out there. Like, why can we not have two magic rounds? Why does it have to be one? And the second thing I wanted to bring up as well is this Melbourne Storm fiasco, this absolute piss take from the purple pricks down in Victoria. Gee whiz, the Melbourne Storm, you guys went about celebrating the players who won illegitimately the 2007 and 2009 grand finals the wrong way gee whiz like if you're the if you're a player uh that was a part of that four year charade you know you put in a lot of hard work and that should be recognized you know cameron smith and billy slater they've come out over the past few days and gone yeah we understand but you should just ignore it why how how can we ignore it when the Melbourne Storm put it right in everybody's faces and the Fox League and Channel 9 cameras were right there to make sure everybody saw it? You know, the best thing that Melbourne Storm could have done for the players that put in the hard yards over the past four years or over those four years, I should say, let's, let's look at Dallas Johnson, for example. He wouldn't have known that there were some underhanded dealings going down. And he was arguably one of the best locks in the game throughout that period. He was just this granite human being. Um, instead of forking out, and thank you to the Hello Sport boys for, you know, uh, making me, he, you know, giving me the information, the Melbourne Storm forked out $20,000 to create, replicate a trophy from 07 and 09. Altogether, $40,000 spent on creating two illegitimately won trophies that they paraded around the other night at Marvel Stadium and just took the absolute piss out of the Parramatta Eels, who were one of the sides that lost the grand final to an illegal Melbourne Storm outfit. That's disgraceful. That is absolutely horrendous and it boils my piss, bro. The thing that they could have done that, in my opinion, you might not agree with it, let me know. But in my opinion, if they went, right, we're going to celebrate 1999, we're going to celebrate 2012, 2017 and 2020, here are the replica trophies that we won legally. Here they are. Let's celebrate it. Give it a clap. Now, 2007-2009, let's welcome out a handful or most or 
all of the players that played in that game, get them out onto the paddock and give them a round of applause. You know what? Maybe, you know, I'm not going to put on my tinfoil hat too much here, but maybe one of or two of the players in that club knew what was going down. They knew how much they were getting paid and how illegal it was. Maybe. But for the sake of argument, let's say nobody, including Craig Bellamy. Let's say nobody in the inner sanctum knew what the board were doing at the time with cooking books and hiding books and what have you to make the salary cap go $1.7 million over over the course of four seasons, right? You get the players out there who played every single game in that period, who played in the 2000 and for, or for the rest of the 2010 season for nothing, deservedly so though, unfortunately, that's not any fault of their own. You bring out those players like a Ryan Hoffman, a Dallas Johnson, you know, Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk, you get them out onto the paddock and you give them a warm round of applause, but you all took the piss, Melbourne Storm. You, you, you all took the piss big time by forking out $40,000 on two fake, illegitimately won titles, and you did it on a night where you defeated one of those teams in one of those two grand finals a decade plus ago. That's disgusting. And I don't like you, Melbourne Storm, but that really, you guys went way too far with that. You were really insensitive about it. And that is the way that you should have done it. You should have brought out as many players as you could and just ask the audience, you ask the, t the, the TV audience as well and say, give them a warm round of applause. We recognize the hard work that these men had to endure and it wasn't their fault what happened to the Melbourne Storm and the reason why we lost these two premierships. And you know what? I reckon you would have won back a level of respect from people that really, really hate you. And it, I think that would have been the proper classy thing to do. But you motherfuckers did what you did? Bro, you all, like, I like Ryan Pappenhausen as a player right now. Harry Grant. But this club, dude, I hope they wake up in a sore trap come Halloween, if you catch my drift. They went about this the wrong way. They had the opportunity to do it a classier way and had the opportunity to actually collectively have the whole rugby league world turn around and say, that's a really difficult situation, but they did it a classy way. They didn't fork out $40,000 and wave the money around while giving the middle finger out to the rest of the freaking nation. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to talk about. Thanks guys for listening. If you're new around to you, hope I can get you to consider liking the content uh, and subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Adios.